Okay, we got a minute and now it's nine o'clock. Uh, so uh, let me introduce everybody to today's session. Uh, first, thank you, uh, Tibor, for organizing uh, the sessions that we're gonna be following today. Um, but we have uh, Jeffrey Kuo from uh, George Washington University. He'll be followed by uh, Trang Huang from uh, Vanderbilt. And lastly, we have Juan Yang from Lancaster University. Um, all our presenters today are graduate students. So uh, everyone I think is encouraged to give them feedback on uh, their work. And you'll each have uh, up to 30 minutes to present since we only have three papers and there'll be five minutes for discussion, uh, just depending on how many questions there are and how the vibe is going. All right, so Jeffrey, you are our first presenter. Why don't you go ahead? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, starting your wonderful weekend uh, here. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Kuo, and I'm currently an economic PhD student at the George Washington University. And it's my great honor to be here to share with you my uh, newly started uh, research project. Um, this is a topic related to the trade agreement between Taiwan and China. And um, since I'm uh, born and raised in Taiwan, and so this project is very meaningful to me, uh, you know, myself as well. And uh, just uh, let me to uh, a little bit of a disclaimer. This is my first time to present this project. So a lot of the stuff uh, still have a room to improve. And this is the reason why I'm here. So please feel free to give me some of the feedback. Okay, so first of all, let's discuss a little bit of my research motivation. So believe it or not, um, <clears throat> this research idea actually coming from the conversation between me and the uh, uh, my, my Chinese cohort uh, in, in our department. So once, once my uh, classmate asked me that, uh, why are the Taiwanese people are so hostile when they referring the, you know, like being referring as a Chinese, even though that China has already made a big concession on the trade agreement and actually promote the, uh, the, the tourism come to Taiwan. So chi China, uh, government actually are very uh, uh, willing to uh, give the economic uh, profit to to the uh, to the Taiwanese firms and Taiwanese citizens. But um, the question that we are going to ask today is that does the higher degree of the economic integration will bring in the uh, political convergence? So surely this is the goal of the. Uh, Beijing government are thinking of. They think that if we have more trade or we have more uh, economic integration between the Taiwanese Straits, then they might have some of the potentials for, uh, you know, unify Taiwan or like reclaim the sovereignty of the Taiwan uh, in the near future. And, but if this is the case, um, uh, I will show you later on today. Okay, so two facts we are going to, uh, 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 explore is the main idea we are going to explore today is uh, starting from 2008, there is a policy shock. It's a sudden lift of the long time travel ban of the Chinese tourists to Taiwan. Okay, so this provides a, a, a good environment for the, uh, for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, for the policy shock, for, uh, you know, a natural environment for the experimental policy shock. Okay, and then from 2008, there's other things that also happened is that the mainstream public op opinion, you know, the, 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 the consensus of the uh, Chinese citizens uh, started to swerve from a uh, favor China to against, okay? So the main goal of this project is I try to identify the open border policy. So it's as part of the uh, uh, free trade agreement that was uh, signed to effect in, in 2008. Um, so does the uh, more economic gains by welcoming more men and tourists rendering unification uh, more favorable from the perspective of the Taiwanese? Or does it push Taiwan further away from China? Okay, and a little bit of the primary, uh, primary results of today is that I'm using the uh, uh, regression con uh, discontinuity design to compare, um, you know, the, the two, these two different uh, presidential elections. And we found that the boundaries between the tourist exposed area and non-exposed area is more significant in 2016. So a little bit of the, uh, the method, okay? So I create a index of the exposure uh, of the Chinese tourists across the ex 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 
electoral district in Taiwan. Okay, so for today, for only uh, today, the, uh, the, the primary result, I used the travel time between the main airport in Taiwan to the electoral district um, as the proxy for the tourist exposure. Then we might be able to answer by comparing the result of the presidential election before and after the FDA shock. Okay. So there's a long history. There's a long history uh, between Taiwan and China. So as some of you might already uh, know that the origin of the differences of the political ideology could date back to the never ended Chinese civil war. Right? So, as, um, so as we know, before uh, 1970s, actually two governments across the Taiwanese Straits are fighting for the legitimacy of the uh, Chinese government. So they would, they would like to uh, try to be the uh, representative um, you know, in the international com community as a, as a Chinese government. But of course, um, each side of them believe that they are the real one, okay? And then uh, during the Cold War, um, US was backed, uh, uh, US backed Taiwan and the Soviet Union backed the PRC. And, um, you know, like, after in, in, in Carter's uh, presidential terms, the, uh, the, the U.S. switched the, recon, uh, you know, the diplomatic recon, recognition uh, from Taiwan to China. And this caused the uh, Taiwanese independence movement begin at that time. And, you know, started to, uh, from 1979, you know, Chinese, China's economic reform started and in, you know, Deng Xiaoping has a lot of the policies that to embrace the foreign direct investment and welcome the uh, the uh, the investment from outside of the China. And it started from the 1986 that the um, uh, democratization uh, of the Taiwan started. Okay, and then we have the first presidential election in 1996, and up until now. Uh, we already have the six times presidential election, okay? And then this is the uh, main political spectrum in modern Taiwan. So we are living in a bipartisan world as well. So just like in the, in the United States, and two of the main party, one is called the Democratic Progressive Party. So this party is the incumbent party right now. So. Uh, who is uh, famous for their uh, ideology for poor pro uh, Taiwanese independence. So they don't want like the Taiwan as a part of China anymore. They want to uh, consolidate the sovereignty of the Taiwan. But actually, uh, you know, like the, since we are in the bipartisan world, um, um, uh, when, when it comes to the party competition, um, their position that uh, will be different in, in in different topics, right? So, Kuomintang, on the other hand, so this is the party that uh, created by Dr. Uh, Sun Yat-sen and led by Chiang Kai-shek in the World War II. So this is considered to be a more conservative party, like uh, uh, more conservative and older party in Taiwan. So their goal is that they are trying to um, being a part of a China uh, in the future, should the China's uh, political system become democratic? So I list here like their main political ideology in the uh, cross Taiwanese Strait, uh, uh, cross Taiwanese Strait uh, topic is that they are uh, holding the position of unconditional unification. Okay, so the foreign policy, if you could, uh, if you simply uh, um, take a look of their 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 foreign policy. The uh, CPP are more pro Taiwanese independence and pro U.S. pro democratic, and Kuomintang are more close to like trying to be uh, close to to China, trying to be a part of China in the future. So these are going to be the election outcome are going to be my main uh, main outcome variable, the dependent variable for today's empirical analysis. I'm going to see the margin between the uh, 
the vote that Kuomintang have minus the DPP have and the shared differences between those two parties. So let's take a look at the electoral results. So this is the main dependent variable I have. Uh, so in 2008, as you can see here, so this is the, the result of the uh, presidential election in 2008, right? So, um, and the small areas here are the uh, congressional district, just like a congressional district in in, in the US, it's the electoral district in Taiwan. Okay, so um, the blue part means that the DDP has won, has a higher vote in that district. And the green part is the DPP has the higher vote in that district. Whereas in, in on the right-hand side, the 2016s, the election results like this. Okay, so what do you see uh, from like the differences between these two maps? Um, if you take a look at these two maps, um, the major part that, that switch their political ideology, that switch their political voting pattern is in the um, northwestern part of the Taiwan, right? So if you take a look at the southern part that the green, green area doesn't change that much in the southern part. And this is the same thing in the, in the east part of the Taiwan as well. Okay, and if you are not 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 persuaded right now, if you are not persuaded right now, um, this is the uh, the shared differences of the vote um, and and um, in in two elections. So before the FTA, before the economic cooperation framework agreement between Taiwan and China in two thousand eight, this is the election result. So, so the darker blue represent that the higher winning margin percentage of the Kuomintang. And then this is the result in 2016. So as you can see, once again, from this graph, you can see that the major part that switch, switch their political identification or like switch the party that they vote, it's from the northern part of the Taiwan. Okay, so what happened? Okay, so at the same time, you know, before 2008, I think uh, some of the people my uh, familiar with the Asian politics uh, here as well. So before 2008, the traveling uh, between Taiwan and China uh, are actually banned, you know, because the war have, hasn't officially uh, ended yet. So the two governments are not willing to let the people to travel uh, from and to each each side uh, legally. Of course, some people could use, um, you know, like um, uh, use some of the special special ways to come in. But the uh, tourism uh, from mainland China to Taiwan is is it's 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 small at that time. So this is the number of the inbound visitor, and the the data is collected from the. Tourist Bureau from uh, Ministry of the Transportation and Communication in Taiwan. Um, okay, so the dark blue line here is the uh, number of the Chinese tourists that change across the time. So as you can see before 2008, um, the, the number of the Chinese tourists are quite small. And then during this period, after the direct flight set up, after the uh, trade agreement start to, uh, after the government started to discuss and talk about the trade agreement, as part of the trade agreement, they agree that the they should encourage the tourism between between the two sides of the street, so that the 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 Chinese tourists increase by by like 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 this pattern. And if we take a look of the share of the inbound visitors, okay, the share of the in, inbound visitor in in Taiwan, <clears throat> this this tell us the same thing too. So before 2008, the biggest part of the Taiwan tourists uh, tourists is coming from Japan, and um, they have the intersection around like in 2009, and then Chinese. Chinese tourists suddenly just become the biggest part in Taiwan. Uh, the just Chinese tourists just just 
took over like the 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 biggest part of the tourism in Taiwan. Okay, so I'm trying to I'm trying to connect the those two uh, events. Either you know I'm trying to correlate those two events and some of the related uh, literature um, uh, that close to the this project. So. So naturally, we will think of the uh, the David Atour, David Dorn, and Gordon Hansen's work, right? So their 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 paper published in 2010 um, uses the Bartek instrument to construct the trade exposure index across the commuting commuting zones in the U.S. and to see how the exposure of the Chinese goods affect the local market, right? And then there. Their latest paper used the same trade uh, exposure index to see whether the news channel viewership got affected across the congressional uh, zones in the U.S. Right. So um, the differences here in my in my project is instead of looking at the trade in the goods, instead of looking at the manufacturer sector, I'm looking more into the service sector. Well, specifically, it's the tourism sector. Okay, and another paper that is related to this project is by John Camo, Magistrate Certainty, and Marco Tepelini's project. They explore whether economic integration fostered the process of the democ democratization. And um, fourteen minutes, Jack. Mm. What's that? Uh, fourteen minutes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And um, thank you. And for uh, Faber and Gover's paper is focused on the tourists in Mexico and how it spilled over the uh, manufacturing sector. Okay, and then for the uh, methodology, I basically just uh, follow the uh, Lee and Lameu's paper, Lee and Lameu's paper to uh, you know construct the simple RD model. Okay, and some of the literature that related to the GS and and, and mapping stuff is uh, it's here. Okay, so uh, two of the concepts I would like to challenge in this 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 project is that well you know like from a micro perspective you know uh, psychologist Golden Oper once said that if you try to put people together you know if they have a conflict they try to you try to put people together in the end the conflict might be disappear uh, because they have more interaction. But this is something that we are going to challenge uh, in this project. Uh, on the other hand, for the macro perspective, you know, like the Bela Palazas, a uh, famous model for the integration, started from the trade and then from the uh, economic integration, union, 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 uh, currency union, and in the end, it's the political integration, right? And I would try to challenge that this is not the case uh, in terms of the cross trade uh, uh, relationship. So where did I get my data? So the electoral the data result is from the Central Election Commission. Okay, so this is the uh, permanent uh, independent agency uh, responsible for administrative, uh, you know, administrating the uh, local and national elections. So what I have in this two election, I have 368 districts across the Taiwan, and I'm trying to re, uh, exclude the remote island right now because I'm trying to calculate the driving time from the from the main airport in Taiwan to those to to those districts. Okay, so like I said before, the outcome variables I have is the winning margins or the voting share margins. Okay, what about the geographical data? The geographical data, I get it from the, uh, uh, the Ministry of the Interior in Taiwan. And we have the coordinate, coordinates of each of the districts. And then I could calculate all the travel distance and time between those districts and the main airport in Taiwan. So the question I firstly I, I face is like which which district which 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 distance I should use should I use the uh, the physical distance or should I use the travel time? So in the end, I feel like the travel time itself is more close to the uh, uh, you know uh, the distribution that we are looking at because there's a clear clear cutoff point in the middle of the 
uh, in the middle of the sample. So that's the reason why I finally choose the travel time. And a lot of the literature in the tourism shows up the travel time or the driving time is a good proxy of the tourist exposure. Okay, so if you want to take a look at the map in Taiwan, this is the, uh, the, uh, the, the main island of the Taiwan, and this is the main airport, uh, right, that in the northeastern, uh, northwestern part of the Taiwan, this is the main airport in Taiwan. And uh, across the Taiwan, there are like 368 uh, uh, electoral district. Okay. So, Sorry, I just, just saying 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so why we choose RD? Okay, a lot of people will say that maybe DID will be a good, good, good methodology as well. So I choose RD because first of all, there's a cutoff point I see from the data. Right, and I believe that we could separate the uh, areas that is, uh, you know, like the less exposed to the tourists, and some of the areas are more exposed to the tourists. And from literature I review, I do believe that the specification like this could work in, 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 in my research right now. So once again, my why the outcome variable is the KD margin or the uh, the the percentage share voting between the uh, pro-China party and the poor independence party. And the treatment is the district exposed to the tourists or not. This is something we don't know, right? But we could actually choose one of the cutoff points. And how do we choose the cutoff point? So C is uh, equal to 290 minutes. So this is like conventionally uh, in Taiwan, people believe that the maximum one day trip that people are willing to drive in, in a day it's about like four hours to five hours. So if you traveling from the northern part, the biggest city, the capital in the northern part in Taiwan to the southern, second biggest city in the southern part in Taiwan, you probably need to sp spend uh, four hours and 30 minutes. So C is somewhere between, um, the cutoff point is somewhere between uh, 240 minutes to 300 minutes. And I will do a robustness check uh, after after this. So then it's the problem of the model selection, right? So as we know that in in RD in the methodology that we uh, that we choose in in regression disc discontinuity design, we need to choose um, which poly local polynomial that we choose, right? So then uh, I compare like the linear model and qubit, quadratic, and quartic. So um, let me see if I have something I would like to say here. Um, so uh, from the result I have, I, I found that if you just simply using the vote margin as the outcome variable, that the higher degree of the local polynomial fits the data best. So for example, here, this is using the, uh, uh, the differences of the vote. Uh, in 2016, so uh, across the different 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 congressional district in Taiwan, this is the model that we uh, this is the graph that we we found. Okay, and just showed you a little bit of the results here. Okay, so what do I have? So if we we compare the res the electoral results in 2008 and 2016, um, we found that the boundaries between the less tourist exposure area and the more tourist exposure area in, in 2008 wasn't really significant. Right? As you can see in the 2008, the, uh, the result, uh, the regression discontinuity results here, oh, none, of the, none of the local polynomial model could uh, give us the result that there is a clear boundary between those two different areas. Whereas if you take a look at the result in the electoral result in 2016, then the 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 cubic and the quartic model becomes significant. And this is the same thing. Uh, this is the same thing in uh, when we're doing the voting share margin. And since we know that if we convert the outcome variable into the voting share, that every variable are going to be uh, between zero and 100. Right, so that's, that's the reason why, like, if we 
switch to the molting shear margin, that the linear and quadratic model become more significant in 2016. Okay, <clears throat> so some of the people might ask, like, if I choose the different C different cutoff point, would the results become different? Excuse me. So the answer is yes, but um, I think the pattern is similar, uh, but I didn't report uh, here uh, for the interest of the time. And um, the second point is if I limit the sample in some of a range, for example, I get rid of some of the outliers of like very large uh, voting shares, um, um, the results will be, will be similar as well. <clears throat> And the complete discussion I will put into the paper. Okay, so the conclusion of this project is what? So two of the quotes here is distance the soul of the beauty or the acquaintance is the passport to the fortune. So what I see from like a very, very primary result I have here is that um, the open border policy uh, that the uh, Chinese government adopted in 2000 it actually hurts the impression of the China from the perspective of the Taiwanese. But here we didn't answer the question why. And there are probably have a lot of the reason why. Maybe it's because the selection of the tourists or maybe it's because the other mechanism probably is because the uh, labor competition or the good competition across the, uh, you know, like at the same time, uh, not only it's because the tourism uh, as the main reason. So what I'm going to do in the future world, first of all, is that instead of just simply using the travel distance between the uh, travel time or travel distance between the main airport to all of the, con uh, the congressional district in Taiwan, I will add the tourist exposure. So I will find out like where the tourists, the, uh, they stay in Taiwan. And actually I'm requesting the data right now and expand the data here to all six times presidential election. Okay, and then I'm thinking of I probably will use the local election as a control group uh, for the uh, for the result I have here because um, you know like presidential election people have, tend to think that foreign policy is more hinges on the presidential election, whereas the local election probably is not so depends on the uh, the, the 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 party's ideology. Okay, and that will probably be it for the presentation I have today. And thank you for, so much for your attention. So I hope you like it. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, very uh, eager to know some of the feedback that you have. Thank you so much. Okay, so the floor is open for questions. Um, I, I think a free for all format is fine if someone wants to ask a question. Uh, I have a question. What? So, so Jeffrey, have yeah. you considered a fuzzy different? I'm um, sorry, fuzzy uh, RD design. I will. This is actually sharp RD design right now. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, if you already consider, that's fine because uh, your treatment is not a sharp cutoff. Um, so exactly. The fuzzy one is better. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. This is just like a very primary result. Um, yeah. Uh, I will definitely do that as well. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is a very interesting uh, question, Jeffrey. And I like that you're looking at um, an example where contact theory may not be the most useful guide. Um, now, I was also um, brought to think of the, art, the more economic arguments regarding how um, people or uh, political entities might change their preferences towards conflict as opposed to uh, more peaceful relationships. So maybe when people come to a, a tourist area that stimulates the economy of that place and they come to see the value of a close relationship with China as you know, helping to make them more wealthy, right? They internalize that and they say, oh, well, maybe more unification with China would uh, make us even more wealthy, right? So that could be another story, not necessarily one that's supported, but nonetheless one that seems related if I'm thinking about how this could play out. Um, and I'm curious what controls you had at the district level. Um, so like, I, I can see how distance from the airport might matter, but then if you think about political change that could have to do with things like income and education, urbanization, all that. So I'm wondering if you controlled for, for those things. 
Uh, so far, I don't. But uh, this is something I am going to uh, add in my in my in my uh, future. You know, like in my in my in my future uh, in in the future uh, in my project. Yeah, and it sounded like you were gonna. It sounded like you're gonna look at tourist destinations that are just kind of yeah. natural attractions, yeah. right? And so yeah. I think that is also important. Um, so yeah, I definitely encourage you to do that. So like get, get place, like look at places that have a high gravitational pull and focus on those regions as opposed to others. Uh, because I think those would be, like you wanna get a, a sense of the pulse of how tourist regions of uh, Taiwan felt, I think. Right. Like not that, so like, I, I can see why like people wouldn't necessarily wanna drive a long way if they're just exploring Taiwan, but there's definitely, if, if um, there are places that are far from the airport that tend to attract a lot of people, you'd expect a lot of Chinese tourists to go there. So right. I think you wanna capture that. Right, yeah. So the, the, the tourist exposure uh, index or the measurement of the tourist exposure is the main thing I'm working on right now. I actually have the, the data of like where where Chinese tourists uh, spend their nights in Taiwan and how many days they spend uh, in Taiwan and how many money they spend uh, during their stay in Taiwan. So I'm trying to, you know, like using them as a better proxy as a, as a tourist exposure. Yeah, and if you can find, so if you can either find the data on where they go or like, I don't know, come up with some sort of um, exposure variable that depends on where tourists tend to go, I think that would be ideal. Yep. All right, but very, very cool project, I gotta say. Um, so, okay, uh, any more questions? Do we have time for like a, a naive question here? Absolutely, um, yeah. We, we have till 9.35, uh, we're saying that's good. Hey, yeah. so what, what is your sense about the type of visitors that are coming to Taiwan? Is there any kind of, you know, self-selection in the sense that, you know, people who like if you if you if you if you've never thought about Taiwan as having the and pardon my ignorance about the sort of the right way to discuss this, but you know like the if the, if you if I'm a Chinese citizen and I have very strong opinions about Taiwanese uh, independence, you know there's many places I can go. You know I don't need to go to Taiwan. I mean China is a beautiful country and there's you know Singapore and Korea and all that. So I wonder if I wonder if that might be contributing of why it'll be hard to find a result because the people who go, they've made up their mind. You know, well, that's true, yeah. here, I was about to make parallels to the current election, you know. So. Yeah, but so far, I don't think, um, at least in Taiwanese government side, I don't think we could have the data, um, um, like for the uh, demographic of the Chinese tourists. Um, but I could definitely look it up. Yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't suggesting. I was more saying that I think you are setting up, like, I don't think it's surprising. If, if that is true, what I said, it might be yeah. not surprising that you don't find like a really clear result that, you know, you see tourists coming and, you know, you see people changing minds. Maybe, you know, maybe there is the, you know, I, I think it would be just more of an argument for attenuation of your, uh, you know, continuity uh, treatment. Yeah, yeah, but I do agree that the uh, the selection, the you know, the selection problem of the tourists might be contribute to like it might might affect the results that I have here because I treat them as um, you know homogenous. I feel like uh, I treat them just like normal citizens from mainland China, but actually they probably already have some of the preferences, and that might you know whether it's like or dislike Taiwan that might have some of the, uh, the if we think about the interaction between the Taiwanese local and the uh, mainland Chinese tourists, then that might play a role. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, yeah, well, so, 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 so the goal of today is like, I try to identify the existence of the, the shock, like the existence of the shock that the open, open border policy actually uh, did in fact the uh, political ideology in Taiwan, um, but the reason why this is, uh, I think, it's a very big topic, and I would like to explore it as well in the future. Well, thank you for your comment. Okay, so I think we need to move on at this point. Uh, so Jeffrey, can you uh, stop sure. sharing your slides? And uh, Trang Huang is going to present her work on the dynamics of global sourcing. Thank you.